So we welcome everyone uh, to Papa's House Church again. I hope everyone is doing good. Everyone is healthy and enjoying the presence of the Lord and the favor of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I just felt in my heart to do this prophetic declaration about uh, Velcro. I think I believe that uh, we as believers, the sons and daughters of God, we just need to speak life over our cities, over our towns, and over our country. Amen. So um, why don't we take Bibles? If you have Bibles, let's take our Bibles. And um, if you don't have a Bible, I think you can yeah, stand next to a believer, a Christian. So I have my digital Bible here. So we'll do this. Psalms 24. Uh, whenever you find the word called earth, we'll put the Lord in the place of earth. Okay? So let's do it together. The Lord is the Lord's and everything in the Lord. The Lord and all his people belong to him. For he laid the Lord's foundation on the seas and built the Lord on the ocean depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship. God has saved you. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. Open up ancient gates of the Lord, open up ancient doors of the Lord, and let the King of Glory enter. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates of the Lord, open up ancient doors of the Lord, and let the King of Glory enter. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of Heaven's armies. He is the King of Glory. Amen. Why don't we lift up our hands and uh, let's thank God for what He has done in our lives. You know, Bible says that His mercies are new every morning and His compassions fail not. And that is true. Yes, of course, we are experiencing His mercies every single day of our lives. The reason we stay healthy is just the favor of God. It's just the compassion of God. Why don't we just take a few minutes and worship God? You know, whether it may be your own language, whatever language it may be, let's just open our mouths, open our hearts, and let's worship God. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Or we thank you for, for God giving one more week, one more day in our lives. So we thank you, Jesus, for God making us alive, for sustaining us, for your provision, for everything, for health, and for everything, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, Lord, Lord, we just want to Lord, come before you, Lord, and let our hearts be open in your presence, Lord. Help us to receive you, Lord. Help us to receive your Holy Spirit. Help us to receive your presence, Jesus, Lord. Father, I pray that you will speak to us, Lord. Father, Lord, Lord, we want to come before your presence this morning. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to each and every one of us, one of us, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We come into the rest of the service in your hands, Jesus. Father, I pray that you will speak to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Let there be a light in us, Lord. And also, I pray, Lord, that as a nice Lord, I'm bringing your word, Father, I pray that you will anoint him, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will, Lord, give us, Lord, the word that we need for today, Lord. Hallelujah. And also, Lord, we just submit the worship team into your hands, Jesus. Father, I pray that you have not come upon us. Let your anointing come upon us, Lord. Let us be filled with your anointing, Jesus, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. We just submit each and everything into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are faithful, Jesus. We are Jesus. You know, uh, I just felt this word. You know, Psalms 27, verse 1. When David is crying out to Jesus, he was saying, 
I have asked one thing from the Lord. This I will seek to remain in the Lord's house all the days of my life, in order to gaze at the Lord's beauty and to search for an answer in His temple. So, you know, we're going to worship God, the living God who knows our heart, who sees everything, nothing is hidden before Him. And we're going to ask God, you know, I just want to worship you. Because you are faithful and there is no like you, Jesus. Oh, see. 
this, Father, tangibly, release of your presence. Pray, the text goes up in the name of Jesus. We pray, Jesus, the presence of God will touch you. The presence of God will touch you. The presence of God will touch you. I pray, we remember from the Lord Spirit, Father. We remember from the Lord Spirit. We heard so many powerful stories. We see so many powerful things. It's almost nothing. We don't feel it anymore. Father, we sing the song, break my heart, that breaks yours. And pray, Father, that song is the prayer today for us. That you break our hearts, that breaks yours. Break our mind, that breaks yours. Break our emotion, that breaks yours. Break our that breaking us. We don't want to just say pity for We don't want to say tragedy. I just want to say by your power, but we will go more deeper than that. We will cry out to you to see a tangible God glory to come on the city of the Lord. Father, we ask you, we are just a handful of people. You use the handful of people to turn the world upside down. But the people of saw the disciples, they said, these are the guys who turned the world upside down. They are here in our town. Father, that is what we are in you, Jesus. That we are here to see the impossible possible, to see the faith becomes your, your change into the will of God, to see poverty becomes a history, to see corruption becomes a history, to see bribery becomes a history, to see dowry becomes a history, to see casteism be abolished, and see the women treated as a second class be abolished. And Pray, Father, that you will place up men and women, the kingdom citizens, go beyond their comfort zone to see your glory manifest. Come on, church, lift up your voice, pray out to God. Don't just, just pray regular prayers. If you can't pray, say, God, break my heart. Break my heart. I want to see how you see. I want to see the world the way you see the Lord. Come on, church. In my question. Yes, Jesus, we cry out to you, Lord. Come on, open your mouth and pray. talking to your daddy. I'm not talking to any, any unknown, impersonal, some kind of distant God. You're talking to your heavenly Father who loves you, who loves to hear your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Father, break it us. The morning, the state of times, those pregnancy in the highlands. Father, your things are best up here. To ask this question Is this how it is in heaven when we design this place? Help us to contend for your glory to manifest. Help us not to be satisfied just attending church on Sundays. Help us to repent from our idea of self righteousness. Just like George Whitfield said, it's not the sin. We need to repent. It's the sin of self righteousness. Sometimes we think we are far better than others. Sometimes we think at least I'm going to church. There are people who don't even go to church. We repent from those self righteous thoughts. I don't know if it is you. If this makes sense, we repent from those self righteousness. All our works are dirty rags before the presence of God. Father, Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I just wait for a couple of minutes in the presence. Maybe the Lord wants to give a word, an encouragement, or some prophecy. Just wait. And if you have a word or anything, just speak it louder or you can come to the microphone and share. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord.
the scripture or a picture or something the Lord just share as Corinthians 14 says prophecies for three things edify, encouragement and comfort thank you Holy Spirit thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you thank you Holy Spirit thank you
people who are in entertainment industry for 50 years. This, this particular state has been ruled by the entertainment industry. In the real world, they said something, they believe the people of this nation believe, the people of the state believe that's going to happen. They voted in the real world and they are still in a mess. We need to pray the King of Glory to be set this This is the state. I'm going to pray for this big out. So many party swaps. I remember that you saw last night. Even some of the criminal Congress members are going to the BJP. So many challenges are going on. The threat to us, we are kingdom citizens. We need to pray to think of global reset. You know, sometimes people say this to me. When I say something, they say, welcome to India. This is not how it's going to work. I sometimes think God lives on the boundaries of India. And he lets his people do his thing. And then when we are really messed up, he comes into his face. No, God is not like that. God can transform any nation. Geneva was the most familiar city in the 18th century. It's transformed today. The word of God is about to transform. It's in you and me. It's not looking for the majority, it's looking for a handful. You can pray out to him. Amen. So don't give up. Just keep praying. You are so far. If you can have to pray, if you can just come up a little bit to the front, that would be really great. But lift up your voices, pray in groups for the elections, the upcoming elections in this state and other states in India. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, we ask you, Father, what God says, ask of me, and I will give you the nations. We ask of you, we ask of you. We ask your kingdom to come. Holy Spirit, come. Come. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Jesus, have your way. Jesus, have your way. Yes, God. Yes. Everything. Everything in darkness. Light will shine. Yes. Light will shine. Yes. Truth will prevail. Yes. Confusion will leave because. Light is shining, clarity is coming. Yes, Father. People are persuaded by money for promoting them. Father, I pray we will reduce the truth more than the temporary dream of receiving money per vote. They will see a big picture of what we shall cycle. Yes, Father. Yes, the kingdom come. The kingdom come in Tamanadi. The kingdom come in Kerala. The kingdom come is this thing, God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We can give a fist bump. You know, how you know, because of all this. We can give a fist bump, you know. And maybe if you can take a little bit of friend seats that would be really great. If you can just occupy some friend seats, that would be really beautiful. Uh, okay, last week we celebrated a lot of birthdays. Can I see anyone who celebrated last week's birthday? Today is someone's birthday. Yes. Today is your birthday. Yesterday was your birthday. Last week was, I don't know what Brother Sunil's birthday was. Right? Where did he go? We are not the left behind. Okay? <laughs> and today is my brother Arnab's birthday. And uh, one of our daughters of Papa Sam, she made beautiful things. And uh, what is the cake called? Banana chocolate chip cookie, something like that. So we're going to celebrate yeah, We're going to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, uh, Sister Rebecca, for bringing your husband, Aaron. Welcome. It's your first time I'm seeing you. Beautiful. And uh, so those who are celebrating your birthday this week or celebrating on you can stand up. I want to just pray for you. Just wherever you are. You can just stand up. I want to pray for you. Yes. I want to pray for you. Yes, brother. Stand up. I want to pray. Father, I thank you for your precious hand over your children. 
from our end. So that we don't need to be today all the way to delivery now. So it's so we we don't know the cost of it, we'll let you know. And if you can't pay for it, it's fine. God will provide whatever it is, we can ship it. So it's gonna be a day a retreat where we will come for lunch and then 27th is Saturday. If you can uh, keep yourself free in that, that would be really great. So we come for lunch, we hang out with the presence of God. Remember something God stirred in our hearts last week. We gather for our homes, we are here, not just to attend the church, not just you know, being part of a building, we are here in part of a family. So God is moving something, so we're going to sit in the presence of God and hear Him. We're going to take some decisions together. And then if possible, you can come fasting, and then lunchtime you can have a feast. So, and then you can have a snack and early dinner, and then you can it up. Do that, do that be okay. So, we mark your calendar on the 27th March, and uh, it will be beautiful. So, some of us will not hear about ourselves. If you remind them, then they can also join. One we are expecting God to speak. Amen. We are expecting. Amen. I am expecting God to speak. You know, one of the prayers that I pray every day, God, I want to hear you once from you clearly. I just don't want to hear it. This is the thing. It's it's comical when I say this, but it's true. Abraham heard the voice of the Lord, and he took Isaac to sacrifice. Imagine he didn't hear, continue to hear the voice of the Lord. He could have sacrificed Isaac. So many Abrahams have lost their Isaacs. Why? Because they only heard the voice of God. We are not supposed to live in the past. It's a present continuous thing. Continue to hear the voice of God. We may, it's not about what God spoke. Yes, it's important. We don't judge that. We don't want with that. But is God speaking to you right now? Amen. So last week we started off with this message, uh, which actually not a message, it's something God put in my heart. I'm sharing this gathered for a purpose. And we're going to continue part two of that. Uh, just before that, we're going to declare this tithes and offering. You can stand up and declare the word, the tithes and offerings. As we give our tithes and offerings to the Lord, we declare, when I gave, I became more like Jesus. He taught me how to give, by giving himself in our ability, without having anything to decide. When I gave, I recognized I can never outgive God. I can never go broke by giving to God. Never come short of my needs because I have to God. When I gave, I co create with Him, co honor with Him to build a kingdom in and through Him in the year and in the nations of the world. This I declare in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to read. I saw one of our friends' Facebook wall this funny little story. I'm going to read this. It's funny, but it's also sadly true. So we're going to talk about this. Okay, in this message. Joe Biden wants to paint White House. He calls for a quotation. Uh, Chinese guy quoted three million dollars. European guy quoted seven million dollars. And the Indian guy quoted ten million dollars. We didn't ask Chinese guy, how did you go three million? Chinese guy didn't buy like, one million for paint, one million for labor union, uh, labor, one million profit. We didn't ask the European guy, he didn't buy three million for paint, two million for the labor, and two million profit. We didn't ask the Indian guy, he replied, four million for you, three million for me, and you will give the three million to the Chinese guy, and he will do the painting. <laughs> it's sad, but you all know the, 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 the subtle pain we feel when we talk about this. And this is what we are going to go into the gathering for a purpose, part two. I believe God has not done with it. So I want to pray before we start. God, I pray, even though know, the story is funny, this is the reality many times we face in our nation. And I pray we are gathered here, Holy Spirit, that you will take control of my heart, you will speak. I pray for sensitive hearts and minds, that we will not just hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. Father, we are not satisfied with encountering you just once a week. We are not satisfied to be in church. 
You didn't die, you didn't send your son to pay this humongous horrific death on the cross so that we can have a good time on Sundays. You came so that this world can present your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So Father, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. So we started last week, gathered for a purpose, part two, and uh, we talked about the seven important things the early church has. So at hand, and we need to embrace that. So we just wrap it up quickly. The seven things you can see here. Uh, worship. We talked about worship is not an event, it's a lifestyle. We talked about word. Word is not something that they just kept it as a mantra that it became a transformational uh, thing in their lives so that they could live a lifestyle of supernatural. We talked about communion. We want to be taking communion. And it's a, it's, a, it's a daily encounter with intimacy with the Lord. And, uh, and then it's so funny, the last three or four days, we didn't have as a family communion because we live in a mom's place and we live in one room and we're still looking for a place and uh, it's quite a few challenges. My daughter asked last night, Daddy, uh, last few days we didn't have communion. Uh, we should have it. And I think even a five year old uh, has this tendency to go back because whenever we talk about we talk about breaking bread, we talk about Jesus died on the cross. We talk about why he died on the cross. And on the way back here, uh, Isaac was praying in the car. Um, and I, 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 Mark, because Sunday school, they brought a lot of crafts and scissors and just, you know, all those movies to paint, chips, and you know, Sunday school needs all those things. <laughs> you and me don't need those things. So uh, Isaac was so thrilled to paint and do all those things. So he was saying, God, I thank you for all this. Greatest thing we want to be thanking you for what you did on the cross. And I was like, wow, preaching my son, you know. So it's that's, you know, we don't need to wait until the 10th standard and the child arrives so that we can teach them the gospel. There is no senior Holy Spirit and junior Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit. And then we talked about fasting and prayer, constant communion with God, giving because He gave and Himself first, and we never outgive God. And then we talked about evangelism and discipleship. And I believe today, God willing, we will talk about discipleship and discipleship. And next week, the Lord uh, allows us in the same direction to talk about evangelism. So, this week we'll talk about discipleship. What is a discipleship? To be a better representative of the kingdom, kingdom citizen. And it's up in the screen. I wrote down here personal obedience releases corporate blessing. It's very important to realize this. Personal obedience releases corporate blessings. It's up in the screen. Uh, you can see this uh, verse, Second Chronicles 7 14. And I have heard this many times. People say, uh, We are like this because the world is doing sin. India is like this because a lot of idolatry. India is like this because many of them are into corruption and bribery. But if you look at Second Chronicles 7 14, it didn't say, if the world repents, the Lord said, if my people who repent, then the consequence of us repenting, the consequence is the healing of the world. Amen. The Lurians, 750, 750,000 people live there. 4.9, let's say, 4.9 million people live in the district of Bilbao. God is not asking all the 4.9 million people to repent. The handful of who say, who call themselves, we are his people. If we repent, what is the consequence of that? Healing of our nation. Amen. So look at this verse. It's so beautiful. If my people, can we look up on the screen, can we read together? One, two, three, louder. If my people who are called by my name, I think some of you are not reading, you are reading within yourself. We do it again. One, two, three. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their lives, then I will get from them. For you clear sin and heal their land. Can you see? You can't be, you can't be more clearer than this. If we do our part, if we pray out to God, 
If we repent, if we seek His face, if we turn from our wickedness, amen. If we choose to say, God, Your opinion is the most important opinion. God releases forgiveness to us, but the blessings comes to the whole nation. Can you imagine that? You can just sit and sit in your mind a little bit. The consequence of your repentance brings a tremendous blessing to the city where you live. So God curse the city. God said, well, look, great circle, brother, that is it. You know, well, look, brother, like this. No, no. Us turning on that from wicked ways. What is wicked ways? Anything that is not original in the sign of God, we do it speaking. It's when we turn ourselves from that, then what happens is, this is beautiful, He brings healing to the land. Amen? Lift up your hand and say, My repentance. My repentance. So those of you who have hands, you can lift it up. My repentance brings healing to my land. My repentance brings beauty to the Lord. Amen? It's hard to believe, right? But that's the word of God. I'm not having it. It's just here. It's us. Us changing. So it starts with us. I wrote down here. Discipleship requires discipline. That means are we disciplined enough to go before God and say, take my God from my eyes first God, so that I can take, I can think about taking other specs out. You know, we are so easy to point finger out one church after another. Was, this is one of the reasons I don't go to any pastor's meeting because then we go there and talk about other pastors who will make it there. I remember sitting in a pastor's meeting, one pastor said, I went to this church, they, their worship takes me to sleep. It's complaining, murmuring, they just criticize one another. It's so crazy and that's one of the reasons we try not to say, this is a church, this is a family, Papa's house, and no members, we don't keep members. It's daughters and sons in Papa's house. Amen. And, and just pastor is not a definition, it's just a function. You know, I would rather prefer to call me name, Anna, you know, Tambi, if I'm in Virginia, you know, obviously for my brother soon. So, somebody is older than me, that makes me feel good. I'm not putting you down, but everybody is like calling me Anna, so they can call you Anna, so somebody is, you know. Anyway, so discipleship. Requires discipline. Amen. Number two, we can't preach what we don't practice. It's very really important. We want to see this nation transform. We want to see corruption become a history. If we are part of the corruption, the Gandhiji said, you want to be part of change, be the change, not be part of the problem. And that's the reality. You can't pray, God, take out dowry. And then you're saying, I'm not asking my family, you know, traditional. Are them. And they were kept. And Gideon is not going to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. When I asked the first time, when I asked Arna Gideon God, who to get married, I said, Did you buy any dowry? He said, No. I gave him a big heart. You know what? Yes. And when we got married, he brought his beautiful bride, and I asked her, Did you? No. That was the confirmation because the word of God has to be confirmed. Anyway. So it's so beautiful. If you wanted to see corruption changes, if you want to see pride goes away, we have to be standing in the place of practicing what we you know, preach. Number three, this beautiful, you know, salt and light. And that's the message this morning also. You know, salt and light. What is salt? Salt enhances flavor. Salt, you don't keep salt as your primary dish. Do you know that? Imagine if you invite me to your home and you open your banana leaf, the first thing you do, you take a big scoop of salt and put it in the middle and you keep the rice in the center, in the power. You think that's all? Salt is never to be. That, that, that tells me that we as church members, we are not church family, sorry, excuse me, you know, church family, we are not supposed to just be a lamp in one place. We are supposed to scatter everywhere. We are supposed to bring fragrance. Maybe in your department, you are the one picking so we get a lot of Christians that are not in your religion. If you are one kingdom person, you are a fragrance there. You bring, enhance the flavor. You give them the alternative thought of the kingdom. How it's going to be. 
Amen. It's the same with the light. Light never fights the darkness. Light shows up darkness way. Amen. Light is never scared of darkness. Light is actually, it's never gonna, light never conquers darkness. Light just shows up. Amen. So, look here, let's go deeper. Matthew 5, 30 to 16. It's up on the screen. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus says. Okay. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except be thrown out and trampled and fall. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Right now, on Sundays, this is the sad part. Sundays, everywhere in this country, so many salts gather together in one place, talk about saltiness. Right now, too much salty. Yes? Yes, too much salty. And we think this is good. Oh, you are know, salt talking to another salt. How was your salty eat? This, this is what we do. And we call it church. God never. Guys, this is something I feel in my heart so strongly. Jesus did not die this horrific death on the so that we can have a soft meeting in science. It's, it's more than that. We are called to bring that flavor in the we are. I'm not saying that should we, we should not gather. It's important to gather so we encourage one another as well. But this is not the primary reason. We are gathered so that we can be scattered to bring the fragrance. Amen. If we are gathered for the sake of gathering, we lost the significance. We are gathered so that we can be scattered. Monday to Saturday, you know, Monday to Friday for the Lord. Saturday is for me, Sunday is for God. That sacred, secular, big type of thinking should be from our mind. Look at this. Neighbor to people light a lamp and put it under the power. Instead, they put it on a stand and gives it light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Look at this verse. Look at this. Your good deeds glorify your Father in heaven. We all want to do good here. Because Sunday, everybody gives, we talk, Christian language, hi brother, hi sister, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory of Dios. All those words, it's Christianese. But this is not good deeds. The good deeds is when your, when your co-worker shows your middle finger or shows that attitude and you still give a price back to the person. When your boss mistreats you, or when your when your when your people with you walk with jealousy just because the favor of God upon your hand, and they do not see the favor of God, but they see jealousy. But in the midst of that painful situation, you still kind of bringing the people in favor. Amen. What happens? You are glorifying the Father. Amen. This is discipleship. It has to spread. It's not just gathered in one place. Now. We are called to be a light and salt in every sphere of society. Everyone God has given a garden. And it is your responsibility to take care of that garden. The kingdom of God is not top down, it's bottom up. Never God said, I will bring the kingdom from top down. It's always bottom up. Kingdom of God is always bottom up. And from there brings a huge transformation. Now, let's get a little bit deeper. Because of our sacred, secular, Greek dichotomy, whole way, you know, a dichotomy means split in two. So, because of that, we still have a very sacred, secular mindset. So, I have a little definition here that will help us to understand. And so, the church meant to be holistic. Today, the church has become sacred and secular. Have you heard that? My parents used to ask, What music are you listening to? Sacred music or secular music? Have you heard that? Anybody ask or anybody ask us? Can we say, oh, man, man. I used to listen to Michael Jackson. Bah, bah. I don't know what's wrong. My dad took that player, started the sauce in In the heat, he put the sauce in the He broke it, but I went to a friend's home, listened to the same. He will not love it. Why? Because breaking it, they quit. Don't tell the cassette. Guys, I'm not that old. <laughs> Did you, have you seen a cassette? 
pocket. And you need the pencil and the cassette are good friends. Can you understand the combination of that? Yes. So, you remember that sacred center, what do you have sacred center? You never said that Friday, Monday to Friday, you know, you are dead again Sunday or morning. It's not like that. You know, say, all is like every day God center. But if you look at the goal, right now, Mondays to Saturdays or Saturday Sundays are holy. Communion Sundays are even extra holy. Sometimes we think like that. The church was a movement. Now church is an institution. It was a movement. It was third people gathered together. They had Jesus in the middle and they were just able to obey. The cloud was there. When the cloud stayed, they stayed. Cloud moved, they moved. The church is an institution. What happens? The church is based, was based on apostles and prophets. Today is replaced by bishops and deacons. And the church was a risk taken. Remember the book of Acts? That's our, that's, that's our foundation. There is no other foundation. Book of Acts, risk taken. The church took risk. They took risk to share the gospel. Today we are cautious. We want to give so soon evangelism. We want to be very careful in present day. We don't want to hurt other people's hurt feelings. We don't want to say all roads lead to Rome. Yeah, kind of brother. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. You know, the church was dynamic. Today, church is very static. I'm not blaming any church denomination. The church means us. Okay? Not like this. Us. Me. It starts with me. Church was transnational. They took, they took the mandate of God the cross. Thomas came to our country. He came to Canada. That's why we have the Christian influence in that nation, in that nation, yeah, the cross of our country. Yes, in that particular place. You know, church was transnational. Today it's just you know, me, 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 me. It's all about building the kingdom. It's all about, you know, who is there. We put so much effort on, you know, recently they said, the less than 5% of what the church is spending towards world missions. 85% we spend on our non overhead cost. Building this stuff like that. We need to ask ourselves this ministry, God is going to bless, it's going to grow. This place is going to multiply. But are we going to be just expanding, putting so much stuff inside that the money doesn't reach out to the world? Is that real? We need to ask ourselves this question. If we prepare, when, when it comes, we can be easily able to manage. The I mean, church was a kingdom center. Today the church is very church center. The church was more salvation for this world. Now the salvation from this world. How to escape mentality? It's all about this world, don't worry. Yes, you see the You know, that's the thing. We have this, but it's not about just Escape. It's not about going to Christ, it's growing in Christ. And the church was based on the love and relationship. Today it's dogma and belief. Can I be honest with you? Some some places you, you cannot you're not welcome because you believe something different. So it's it's very sad how we are right now. You know, you give communion to the little children. Oh, I'm not going to be wrong with your place. You can come again with people who are not baptized. Oh, you girls don't come in your head. Don't talk to me. That kind of church is less spiritual. Mm-hmm. Papa's house is very less spiritual. According to the understanding. We, we are so divided, isn't it? We gather only those who agree with us. Those who disagree with us will demonize them. How can we grow? How can we bring transformation? We cannot bring transformation because God wants. And belief system has overtaken love and relationships. And then church was based on the word of God. Today it's based on the creed. My doctrine, brother. Now we are not We are very, we are like this. We are like this. We miss the whole purpose. Do you understand? This doesn't make sense. It's just backdrop. I'm going to get to the subject very quickly. And Disciples disciple the nations. That means it's that if you and me are not willing to be challenged with this truth, you can't go and change the world outside. That's why it's like somebody said before truth sets you free, it makes you deserve it. Now we are sitting here and we're thinking, my goodness, I think a little awkward. 
going through this subject because we are not, we are so far from what Christ is preaching. But it's good news is we can come back. We can bring transformation. If my people repent, he will be there. Amen? Amen. Now, I have written, it's a little bit triangle. Daryl Miller talks about it. It starts not to see a transformation. This is what happens. It starts with repentant soul. It starts with repentant soul. What is the repentance? Change of direction. Repentance is not reading in test chest thousand times. Repentance is not crying louder. Repentance is not being a penitent heart. Repentance means changing the direction. When we see a repentant soul, it produces renewed mind. You see that? You see, repentant soul, that's the spirit. We are spirit, Holy Spirit, remember, we are spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. When we are repentant in our soul, soul is the mind, emotions, and will. When we are repentant in our soul, it brings transformation in our mind, renewal in our mind, and it produces reformed culture. So, soul is repentant, mind is renewed, culture. What is culture? Set of classes, how you see the world. He said, Young culture, brother, we are male chauvinistic people. Without mustache, no one is called a male in town. Chalikati is our primary thing. You remember this thing, the whole thing, the tension, when we in the culture, in our culture, brother. When we, when we are when we are about to get married, we are near this. Some close friends, family friends to us, they come came to us and said, for our culture, this big girl will not sit. For them, every season they change clothes like that, they change their husbands. You see, the world we have, find somebody. She's more committed to the call of God in this nation than I am. I'm saying this to you. Sometimes our old term, tall, go. But so she is more committed to see the kingdom. Amen. That's the touch. Transform, reform the culture. Once it's reformed, it goes to rebuild the society. Now, we want to rebuild the society. We want to see the look. We declare this law. Well, whether it's clean, green, and beautiful. Yes? We are declaring this. In order to be clean, green, and beautiful, where it has to start? It has to start with the repentant soul. What is the repentance? I am not going to trash my city. That means that repentant soul gives me a renewed mind. Then I am thinking about how I'm going to discard my masters. I'm just giving you a tangible example. Then it brings into your culture. In our culture, in our group, we tend to be minimizing the plastic bags, for example. Then it creates a renewed society. We can't just make a legislation. That's the biggest challenge in America. They think if they put a president who is pro life, everything is going to be pro life. No, it's going to start with you and me. If you think your life that you carry in your stomach is not valuable, you won't have one anyway. Anyway, if you are a pro president or a you know, pro life or pro choice president, it has to start with us, repentant soul. And then, if you look at it, the gospel, it has to preach to the lower level. If the gospel is preached to the lower level, it produces renewal mind. And then finally, it brings disciple information. It changes the gospel, we preach, you have somebody in your cubicle, he comes to you, you say, Have you heard about Jesus? Yes, so the came to You know, some of you are learning coming. My sister Roshi, uh, she she has funny stories about how she speaks Tamil, you know. And uh, one of the things comes to my mind, I don't want to say that in the recording. But uh, so gospel, have you heard about Jesus? I had a privilege of being in Mongolia. When the sister said, Go be desert, and we knocked this gear, people living there. We asked them, Do you know Jesus? You know what they asked? They said, What is Jesus? They didn't even know Jesus is a person. What is Jesus? So we have to sit with the translator, share the word of gospel. So the gospel preached, it brings the new of mind. You know what we stop? We stop in proclamation. Somebody says, Yes, yes, you can see. We think it's done. No, it has to transform our mind. It has to translate our culture. That brings transformation to the society. Same thing. Beliefs transfer to the values. Values transfer to behaviors. Behaviors brings consequences. In other words, we have repentant souls, 
renewed lives, reform culture, rebuild society. Does it make sense? It has to. What do you believe? And that's what I put down some example here on the next screen. First, we preach the gospel. Then it creates a renewed mind. Then ultimately the nations being inside. It starts with our belief. If you and me believe that all men are created, men, men and women, are created in the image of God equally, then we value life. But you think male up here, female here. Sometimes it's not a big deal. Or caste. I'm from the high caste low caste. Christians look for caste. I cast all my cast upon Jesus. Amen. I like that part. Amen. Did you cast all your cast upon Jesus? I'm a mixture of all the cast. My mother's side, Rani, my father's side, Dali. I married a white man. It's all mixed fruit, Jan. All the fruits are there. Mixed. Only one thing you should taste is sweetness. Amen. It starts with the belief. Then our beliefs become our values. That means we value we want individual's expression. We don't say, you don't behave like me. You are weird. In Spanish they say you are eres muy raro. That means you are so weird. We immediately say, it's not like our type. Why? Because we are not tolerating or we are not embracing the other people's expression of who they are in the Because we don't, that's why we have stereotypes. We don't have races and we are regionalism. North East people, North Indian people, South Indian people. How can we see transformation? I lived in one country as a missionary and gave it a name. And they have one denomination, a reformed church. Dutch reformed church. And they have a black Dutch reformed church, white Dutch reformed church, colored Dutch reformed church. One denomination, three congregations. They won't meet together, they won't meet hands together. Why? Divided by color. Look at this. Values become some behaviors. That means when we, what we believe becomes our value. Value has to translate in our behavior. That's why we go to the streets, serve the poor needy. That's why we ask people to pray. That's why people like Durga. Last week we prayed for Puja. Umesh, the guy who's not the top successful person in the business world, but he's still working inside. These people need Jesus. So that means the belief translates into values, values translate into behaviors, behaviors ultimately produces the desired consequence. Means the expression of God's heart will tangibly see in the name of God. Discipleship is not a one event. Discipleship is not just you come and go on Sunday. It requires your daily commitment. I just got to paint the entire life here to see the discipleship happen. You mean in the area of medicine? William Carey spent the entire life here to see 40 languages. City staff spent their entire life. Henry Martin spent his entire life. Only 29 years ago, he translated Urdu Bible in the Hindi industry. William Lundberg spent his entire life. Pandit Padamaba spent their entire life. You have to willing to lay down your life, pick up the cross if you want to see the sign of the nations. It is not going to happen short term. It's not just coming to the temple of church. It is not making a check and giving up the offering box. It is not money transfer. It requires your life, my life, to take up the cross and follow. Amen. We like the cross of Jesus, but we don't like the cross that we are called to carry. The cross of Jesus brought us from death to life. The cross of Jesus. The cross of Jesus brought us from death to life. The cross we carry helps us to die daily so that Christ can live in us. Say amen. Amen. That's why. So the behavior. So the goal. This is the goal. The goal. India doesn't become a Christianized country. A lot of African countries are Christianized country. The goal. The kingdom expression is made tangible in the spheres of influence. We don't want Pakistan to become Peter. We don't want Mangala to become Yester. We don't want Christianized. You understand what I'm saying? We don't want a Christianized nation. We are not praying for a Christianized nation. We are praying that the kingdom values create a transformation in the hearts and minds. That we can see a tangible, we can never see the ultimate, because the ultimate and the glory, glory comes and we, you know, when we are waiting for Jesus' second coming. But 
that we see a tangible reflection of this in the morning. Yes, it is the Lord. Amen. That requires, that requires not just one person talking 40 minutes, you take notes in your Bible. That requires all of us. That's why we say, come on, come on, this time. Please be with you as your brother. Make that day available. Come, let's sit together. Ask the daddy what he wants to talk to us. And let's go into the practice. I want to see the Lord, no, let's see the Lord take the Lord. I want to see the Lord, see, becoming a branch, yes, the modern city. A city that sits upon a hill, that shines light in the darkness. What happens when the city sits upon a shines light? It brings clarity. A salt that brings values. You may not just enjoy having a good time. It's more than that. We need to grow. The man, first of all, gets dirty, it's not on the screen. Paul says, when I was a child, I behaved like a child. I talked like a child. You know what the child do? If you give them a gift, they go to another child. Look what daddy gave. What we are doing in our church? Look at my gifts, brother. They speak in tongues. Do you speak in tongues? I prophesy, do you prophesy? I, I, I touch people for I don't know. We, we are so focused on our gifts, we come back. This church, they don't talk in tongues. This church, they are not spiritual. What they are doing? They are trying to compare one another. Paul says, when I become grown up, I put away the childish thing. We need to stop. It's time to stop all those things and ask God, why you came on my own? For me to have a good time on Sunday or to buy. What about the rest of these things? What about the rest of the streets of the things? Today, the fashion of the streets is being taken by LGBT community. Do you know the old magazine? It's like the Bible of the facts. Fashion ministry, the old magazine. It's taken by the LGBT community. What is our voice, the Christian voice in the fashion industry? No fashion brother is to seek a brother. Jesus is coming. Is that, is that our response? Think about this. What is our response in those areas of influence? Now, I put, put down these pictures, you know. So that you can just have a look on that. But I have two questions. I want you to write it down this question. So I'll take a picture. I want you to think about this video and pray that we'll come back next week and talk about this. These are the two questions I want you to know. What is my garden that God has given to me to nurture and influence? What is my garden? Yeah, you know that garden that we have together. But God has given you a garden. Maybe your garden is just like a bodily garden. Maybe you are on the fourth floor of your garden. God is a bodily God. He's more than one. But God is living with God. Don't wait for a two-acre garden to bring you friends. Start with this, you know, handing over your bodily and thoughts. Nurture that. Then God will eventually bring. Maybe two people in your department that you are head of or your co-working, they don't know Jesus. How can you bring an influence? Nurture an influence. Jesus was an influence. Jesus was not a religious person. Jesus was an influence. Number two, what steps do I need to take to see God's fullest expression of original design in my garden? What steps? Maybe you need to start talking to someone in your garden. We will talk about it next week when you're coming again. But please think about this. Talk. If you're married, ask yourself this question with your with your wife, with your husband. What are we doing in our garden? Are we nurturing them? Are we just suppressing their gifts? Are we influencers? Are we influenced? I want to challenge you to think about these things because my, my desire is never to see that you have a good time on Sunday. My desire is to see that you, you and me will have Christ expressed in fully. Amen. It's not about good time. With good time, you can watch a movie. You can watch, you can go to, you know, there is a new restaurant called Park. Pratik Pratik was telling me, you know. You can have a good time there. Church is not about good time. Come on, Raynard Pocky says, church is not a place where you have soft mattress to lay on. Church is a place where you have equipped to go and preach that message. Amen. So let's not have the idea. I'm going to have a good time. And 
It's, it's still contracted. Yes, that's why you are here. I am challenging not you, I am challenging first to me. If this message doesn't make sense, leave it. It makes sense to me. I am I'm asking this question. I am 44 years old. God, what the heck am I doing in this world? I am just not to just live, go and preach everywhere, have my passports full of been to other nations, blah blah blah, you know, create a portfolio. It's not about me. Why the heck he came to the earth? Just so that I can have a good time? Or something, or this transformation that I hear, the books that I read, the heroes of faith, all that I hear, if you think of the past, now I have to live with this mindset like everything is gone. Or what's my goal? How can I see God's first expression? Amen? Can we take a few minutes to pray? And we will close this lap this time. I know it's 10 past 11. We want to take communion. If I can ask two uh, volunteers to help us with the communion, it would be great. But we'll take a few minutes to pray. Holy Spirit, I know you are doing something in our family. We don't want to quench it. First Thessalonians 5 9 says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Father, we don't want to quench your work in our hearts. We want to, as, as much as it is painful and uncomfortable to even talk about this, Father, have your way. Have your way. You are the God, you are the only one who can convict us without condemning us. We know you are convicting us. And I pray that you will do your full work in us. That we will yield to your work. We will yield to your work. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray if this world has brought any sense of condemnation, any way trying to steal that thoughts that came from you to bring any sort of confirmation we cancel it right now. It's not about we doing some change. Father, we are allowing you to bring the change. Father, with us, with our intellectuals, with our ideas, with our good powerpoints, nothing can bring transformation. But Jesus, when we allow ourselves, just like Stephen allowed himself, he was just a cup bearer. Like Nehemiah, like Israel. When we allow ourselves, like Adasha, when we allow ourselves, we know we can do the transformation. So, Father, we are here. We want to say we allow you to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take a couple of minutes to just respond. Maybe you need to just pray a little bit clear. A prophetic prayer, maybe, maybe a repentance prayer, maybe a corporate repentance you need to do. Just tell me or just do that so that we can, we can agree with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Daddy, I repent of my thoughts that I, I thought just having a big church means success. I repent from that. Success is not having a big church. Success is to see the church bringing the kingdom in the city of Come on. You can wherever you want, just if you want to repent, just, just one or two sentences. Just declare it, there is power in repentance. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
need two people to help me with the communion. But I don't want to be with you. And I think, thank you, Jesus. It's an example of you. Thank you. We're going to take the body of Jesus. We're going to taste his blood. Isaiah says this in his wounding we found the healing. It is not just the physical healing, it's the relational healing, the emotional healing, the holistic healing. That's why the Jews, when they say shalom, it's not just the peace that we imagine showing us, it's the holistic, every area of life. Shalom. Christ wants to be conquered in every area of your life, not just on Sundays, not just on a religious activity. God is unboxing. And we've been doing the last 2,000 years trying to put God in a box for Sunday, box for event, box for service, box for program, box for church institution. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We'll take it, we'll take it together.
pray and then we'll take part together. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus because of our rebellious deeds you was pierced and because of our sins you was crushed because you endured the punishment that made us completely whole and in your wounding we found our healing father the healing of the city is not in the hands of a politician the healing of this nation is not in the hand of a businessman. It is in the hand that got pierced 2,000 years ago outside the city so that outsiders like us can find healing through his son. His name is Jesus. Let's take part together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this precious blood. You washed it. You cleansed us. Father God, when you look us, look at us, you don't see our past. You just see your son's blood. Because your son's blood, you accepted it. We are accepted in Christ. In Christ, there is no condemnation. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. In Christ, there is life. In Christ, there is joy. In Christ, our life is secure. Outside of Christ, we have no meaning. Inside of Christ, we find significance. We thank you. Let's take part together. Thank you, Jesus. If we can all stand up, we're going to sing one worship song. You have any Hindi song prepared? Yes. We need to express God in different languages. We are a multicultural church, a family. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing one worship song and then please don't leave. One of our daughters prepared banana cake samosas, chips, puffs, juices, in such a way you don't need to eat lunch. Huh? Brownies also. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Huh? And chocolate cake. It's the sugar on steroids we're going to be having. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Bobby 
Bless you guys. Here 
are some announcements. If you have missed any of our sermons, you can watch them by logging in on Papa's House through YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes and Facebook. We have a family support program where we support single mothers and their children by getting provisions through finances and opportunities to earn a livelihood through small businesses. Every Friday, through our homeless feeding program, our team prepares and distributes food packets for homeless people in and around Velour. We would encourage you to join us in this program by either preparing or distributing food packets and also by considering making your generous contributions through your finances. If you consider yourself to be a part of Papa's house, then we would encourage you to send your tithes and offerings. But if you are visiting Papa's house for a few occasions and led by the Spirit and you feel that Papa's house has made a difference in your spiritual life and your connection with Christ, you could consider sowing a small seed through an offering. We would make sure it falls on the good soil so that it reads a good reward from God. You can find the details of the bank accounts and Google Pay should you decide to send in your offering to us. We will intimate to you once we have received it. Also, here are the links on how you can reach and follow us.